What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In today's video, we are jumping into the final issue of Marvel Zombies Black, White, and Blood. As we get into issue number 4, we have a story with Blade fighting off against the zombie apocalypse. We have the Punisher trying to find a cure, an opportunity to save the entire world. And then we take a trip to the Savage Lands, where we have Kazar and Shauna. They fight against the undead, but if we know anything about the Marvel zombie apocalypse, there are no happy endings. So, make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we pick up with Blade. The zombie plague has taken over the world, but in this world, there is one safe place. One safe haven left for humanity. But right now, Blade is currently fighting off Mr. Fantastic. More than that, he is fighting off the Fantastic Four, the zombie versions of them. And Blade would much rather be doing anything else. But the truth is, he hasn't seen a superhero in quite some time. He hasn't seen anybody but himself. At least when it comes to defending the innocent. It has just been him and his partner, the man known as Rick Jones. This is when we have the arrival of the Avengers. They have all been drawn here because this is the last outpost of humanity. They have been drawn here because they want meat. They want brains. They have all been drawn to what is called the Sanctuary. Nothing is able to get through its force field. Not even the superheroes. More than that, the entire place is self-sufficient. The only thing that this place actually needs is food for its ruling class. This is where Rick Jones comes driving in. This up-armored vehicle currently carrying what survivors they could find. While Blade holds onto the back of the vehicle, the Avengers attack. They know that they're not going to be able to hold off the Avengers for long. But they just need to get close enough to the Sanctuary. Close enough for the Calvary to come out. And that is when we see them. Vampires wielding freaking machine guns. Dracula and his crew, they come out and they lay down some hate. As Blade works to get all the innocent lives inside the sanctuary, we have Rick Jones who is carrying a bomb, sacrificing himself so that everybody can make it inside. So everybody can make it inside the last standing utopia. But there is one catch to this place as we have seen. It is ruled by Dracula and his whole horde of vampires. The Sanctuary is the Vampire Nation, and everybody that they bring in here, they get a good life. It has room, board, and everything in between. You can stay happy, healthy, your kids can be raised up, it can all be great. The only cost is that you will be used as cattle. Every so often, they're gonna drain some of your blood. This keeps the vampires alive, but they're not gonna kill the people. They drain them only enough to get enough blood to nourish themselves. And so the vampire nation protects what is left of humanity, but they have become nothing more than slaves. Blade must solely himself for the greater good. He must survive and be patient, because one day, one day, the zombie menace will be extinguished. The rose of humankind will bloom once more. And when that day comes, Blade vows to kill every one of these blood-sucking vampires. This is what takes us over to our next story. We pick up with Frank Castle Punisher. And like any good Frank Castle story, we pick up with him just slaughtering zombies. Any and all that may stand in his way, he is absolutely annihilating them. But inside this facility, he is able to get into a laboratory. Once he gets inside, this is where he is met by an AI of Dr. Stone. And Dr. Stone almost immediately begins to evaluate him, telling him that an identity crisis is defined as a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of self becomes insecure. The question remains, if there is no one left to punish, are you still the Punisher? Now Frank Castle breezes over that part because this AI knows his name. This is an artificial recreation of Dr. Stone, having all of her memories, elements of her personality, plus the ability to scan thousands of databases worth of knowledge faster than he could even blink. So she knows all too well exactly who Frank Castle is. But the real Dr. Stone died two years ago. 
Frank Castle had come here because he received a transmission. Dr. Stone may no longer be here, but her research is. Dr. Stone's message said she found a way to fix everything. She succeeded in creating a virus that could spread through the entire population, killing all the undead. But she also created a cure. Now, this cure has only been tested on a very small sample, but the tests were overwhelmingly positive. Frank Castle deciding that he's gonna play along just for a moment. This leaves him two options. Spread a virus created specifically to wipe out all the damned zombies. Or take a chance with a cure that has no evidence that it could actually work. Outside of an artificial intelligence telling him that it might work. And we all know the Punisher is going to choose to spread the virus. To kill all the zombies. And so the AI theorizes that you're going to kill all the zombies and continue a pointless mission. You see, killing people used to be what drove the Punisher. But in this new world, death takes on a completely different meaning. But if he answered Dr. Stone's message, that means he wanted to help. Dr. Stone never believed that her purpose was finding a cure for the zombie apocalypse. That didn't stop her from trying. She made a choice. And now Frank Castle must as well. As the zombies begin to break down the door, Frank Castle knows that he's not gonna make it. And he knows that Dr. Stone's work, it has to be spread. It has to be distributed. And so Frank Castle decides the one option he may have left. He lets the zombies come in. He uses that virus, hoping that he is going to be the last casualty in the last war. Or maybe he is just the sacrifice that finally wins it. This is what takes us to our last story in the Savage Lands. It only took about three months for the zombie virus that Quicksilver had brought to the Savage Land to spread. The mindless violence taking over every aspect of the Savage Lands. Every creature infected, every animal and dinosaur, everything in between. And the most unfortunate, Kazar has been taken over. He has been bitten. He tells Shauna that you must protect our son. At all costs, he must live. With Zabu staying behind with him. Inseparable the two are. Loyal to the last stand. Even when he turned into a zombie, Zabu stayed right there. Taking a deadly and fatal wound right to the neck. But with Shauna being able to make it back to their hilltop fortress. They fight off everything and anything that may step in their way. The Aryans take to the sky to protect the fortress. But the day has finally come where the hunger can no longer be kept at bay. The dead are now marching on them. And little Matthew running into his father. As Kazar goes in to take out his own son. This is where Shauna shows up. She fights him off. Both Zabu and Kazar. Taking her spear, she impales the both of them. To finish it off, she picks up a knife and she drives it right into the head of Kevin. A young Matthew sitting here wondering if his father is going to get up. If the zombie stuff has been taken out of their bodies. Now Shauna tells her son that it is time to go. But in all the chaos, in all the fighting, she never saw that her son got nicked. The zombie virus spreading through his blood. While she mourns over the body of her beloved, the zombified version of her own son comes in for the deadly blow from behind. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Not a bad story, definitely my favorite one is the Blade story. Blade out here saving what is left of humanity to bring them back to the sanctuary. But the sanctuary is nothing more than the vampire nation. But in this post-apocalyptic zombie apocalypse, it can make for very strange bedfellows. In this situation, vampires have become their friends. In this situation, being fed on by vampires, it is the least of their problems. When you have hordes of zombies, superhuman zombies, ready to eat your brains. Who wouldn't take having your blood drawn every so often to ensure your survival? One thing that the black, white, and blood has shown us, one thing that the Marvel zombies as a whole has shown us, there are no happy endings. Now when it comes to this Marvel zombie apocalypse, it takes, it destroys, and it annihilates anything in its path. There is no hero coming to save the day. There is no last glimmer of hope. It is the end of the world, and there is no reversing it. There is only survival, and there is only death. 
So let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you want to get caught up on everything going on with Marvel Zombies, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.